Check, check. Good morning. Today when we stand and greet each other, you're going to lean into the people that you are greeting and just whisper which team you're rooting for tonight. 49ers, Lions, hold on, I'm going to remember the Ravens, Kansas City, or... If you really don't care, your code word is just to whisper Taylor Swift. <laughs> and they'll go, me too, me too. Because my team's not in anymore, so who really cares at this point? But let's stand up and greet each other this morning in the name of the Lord. Shake a hand, touch an elbow, whatever you're comfortable with. handful of announcements and updated prayer requests. Uh, Adult Bible study after church starting at 1050. Mary Lynn is leading uh, one on Romans called Faith on Fire. Middle school and senior high both meet tonight at the regular times. We're having our consistory meeting Wednesday night for the one we missed during the snowstorm and the cold a couple weeks ago uh, this Wednesday at the regular time. And that'll cover both January and February. This is probably, you probably have one or two weeks left, but you're getting close to the end. If you haven't grabbed your word of the year off the plate and the table, you want to grab that today. Um, we lost our piano player this morning. She and Royce, Charity and Royce, both got the flu really bad. They've been sick since Friday. So uh, none of the songs in your bulletin are the songs we're singing today, but it'll be just fine anyway. We'll have a good time. And that might be it for business, I think. Does anybody else have any announcements or business before we get started? Yeah. I think it's on. Might as well make a formal announcement. Everybody has been asking how my husband's doing, and he's on the men's. He got transferred out to the Mercy Clive Rehabilitation Hospital. He was out there earlier this summer with his fractured ankle that he was just getting better on when this popped up. Ha ha. Anyway, he'll be there for about a week and a half, they say, and they'll work on building up strength in him before he gets to come home. Then he'll be outpatient at Newton. So that's how it goes. At least he's on the men's. Thank yes. you, Lord. Yes. And say something about Israel. Yes, of course. <laughs> and uh, we were even talking this past week as 
terrible as that ankle was, it might have actually saved his life because his heart was pretty blocked and they were kind of amazed it hadn't uh, had a heart attack yet, but since he'd had those months where he was taking it easy for his ankle, it might have, might have saved him. Yes. God works in mysterious ways. Uh, that leads us to other prayer concerns. We have updates on. Um, we did get a date for Heidi Van White's surgery. It's going to be February 8th. So they're asking for prayers for her. Um, since she's finished her chemo, they said uh, she's got a lot of doctor's appointments before then. Uh, other updates we have. Um, Jordan did find out there is a break in his shoulder, um, and they're waiting an MRI. I haven't heard an update on that yet, but it sounds like he'll probably need some kind of surgery maybe to fix that bone in his shoulder that he's been having pain from um, after the accident. Um, uh, Dina Kane's mom, we've been praying for Nancy. She's been in hospice for the last couple weeks, and Dina's been able to be by her side with family. She did pass away this week. Uh, her visitation is Thursday at the Mitchell Funeral Home in uh, Marshalltown from 5 to 7, and the funeral service is Friday at 10 a.m. at the Hope United Methodist Church in Marshalltown. And we'll send that out on an email this week uh, for anybody who wants to support her. Um, that might be all the updates I have. Does anybody else have any joys or concerns or updates on the bulletin that I missed? Yeah, why? I just wanted to remind our Connect Committee, we're meeting right after church. Um, just grab a cup of coffee. We'll probably meet in that over the classroom there just beside the men's restroom. If We're still looking for a couple more people, so if you aren't on a committee, you want to be on a committee, find me, meet over there. We're looking for a couple more, so more the merrier if you, uh, if you still want to get on a committee. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. That reminds me, too, we're having our third uh, profession of faith class after church today for those who can be here, and there's a few who maybe couldn't, so we'll make it up for them later. Master? Yeah, oh, Master Dobby. I just wanted to thank Mark Smith and his uh, transportation department for all the hard work oh, they yeah. did during the month of January, keeping our county roads clear, and that was no easy task. And not only were they keeping the roads clear, but Mark told me last Sunday <clears throat> that when the uh, county sheriff was getting phone calls because people were stranded in the ditch or in the cornfield, guess who got called? The transportation department. Yeah. So he was rescuing people in the ditch as well. So anyways, thank you, Mark, for everything yes, you did. thank you. Not only that, he let him sit in his warm vehicle and warm up and consoled him over a damaged car or whatever else. He's also a uh, therapist for those in the ditch as well, I heard. Other joys or concerns? Oh, yeah. I'd like to ask for prayers for a good friend. Her granddaughter is having a pretty invasive surgery tomorrow. She is just a baby. Hmm. So they are in Mayo. The surgery is tomorrow. So please just pray that the surgeons are guided and that God gives them peace and comfort because they're pretty stressed out. Yeah, I bet. Thank Would, you. you have any names? Anybody? Lennon. 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 No, that's all right. Lennon. We'll be praying for Lennon. Any other joys or concerns? Well, it is a big birthday day. We have two birthdays today. I think only one is here. It is Cole Van Rijswijk's birthday today, and he got to celebrate yesterday with some of his closest friends doing what they love most, which was working on the parsonage. And so we need to sing Cole a happy birthday. Before we do that, thank you, Cole and Nathan Kubley and Drew Vanderbeek and Brett Greer. Is that everybody that came and worked on the Parsonage basement floor yesterday? Very much appreciated. So we're going to sing happy birthday to Cole with some extra gusto because he was the foreman for the morning. Extra loud, Andrea. Here we go. Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy 
birthday, dear Cole. Happy birthday to you. And we don't normally do this. It's against the rules unless it's a big deal. And yesterday, Lorena celebrated her birthday. It's not on a Sunday, but we found out because of leap year, she doesn't get a Sunday birthday next year. And you only turn 65 once. So we're going to sing happy birthday to Lorena. Um, what, maybe 10, 15 years left till retirement we have her. So we're going to appreciate her while we've got her. Let's sing to Lorena. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Lorena. Happy birthday to you. Would you stand this morning, take one more chance to greet those around you, and let's sing some opening worship songs to God this morning. Thanks. Sí. 
children are invited forward this morning for the children's message. Come on down if you got any dollars or quarters. Pennies, dimes, or nickels, wave them in the air. And they'll come grab them. any other hands waving out there? Oh, there's some in the back way over there. Keep them waving. Oh, I'm realizing I forgot my name tag this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Any other hands out there? Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, grab a seat. Oh, we are going to look for the cross first, but here's the problem. McCoy <laughs> hit it last week, and McCoy is wrestling. He is not here today. So we get the extra big challenge of trying to find where the cross is. I, they gave me kind of a clue, but the clue didn't make a lot of sense. That big one? Should we just call that good for the week? And let, oh no, we're not looking for the cross. We're looking for the baby Jesus from the nativity scene, remember? Oh yeah, so that, you know, that you can't use that today. We gotta find the baby Jesus. So here's what we're all gonna do. What? We're not just gonna look. You're all gonna be looking around you in the pews too and see if you spy it anywhere. And I'm gonna kind of look maybe where the hint was and see if that helps, but I don't know where to look. Ready, set, go. Let's see if we can find it. Somebody find it? Anybody find it? No, it's not by the piano. Right? No, it's not by the piano. No. It's not where I thought the clue was telling me to look for it. Well, I look over here. Oh wait, I was looking by the piano, and the clue was the organ. Is there any kind of, no, it's not the guitar. Is there any kind of red cushion? By, oh, wait, 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 Oh, we found it. Boy, that was maybe the trickiest spot I've ever. No, I said it was the baby Jesus. I He put it in the book slot underneath the chair that's up on the pulpit. No, you hold on to it. You get to hide it after church, okay? You don't have, I can hold it. All right. We'll give it, we'll give it to Aunt Andrea and you can hide it with her after church, okay? It's kind of perfect that we were looking for something hidden because I want you to look at your coloring sheet today and tell me what you think these kids are doing. They are playing hide and seek. And it's kind of fun because you can look through this picture today and go, I wonder how many kids... How many kids we can find that are hiding in your coloring sheet today? But here's why it's good, because the scripture we're reading in church today is about David's favorite hiding place. Can anybody guess where King David's favorite hiding place was? What do you think? Behind a cross? No. He got it. What were you going to say? I was just saying the bushes. In the bushes, yeah. What were you going to say? He's going to say, Bush, what were you going to say? Yeah, by the plant. Here's, Jace actually got it exactly right. King David was a guy who lived in great big fortresses, but he also lived in dirty caves. He was a guy who lived in a nice house, but he also was a guy who lived out by his sheep and slept in the grass. He was a guy who slept with a big army, and sometimes he had to sleep when he was all alone, didn't have anybody with him. And so he would say, no matter where I am or what I'm doing, guess where I actually am always hiding? With God. If you have God in your heart, no matter where you are, you can always go to him for your hiding place. Yeah. That's just somebody looking out of the bushes. This isn't actually a picture of David hiding. These are just kids. It's just, just kids playing hide and seek. 
So anytime that David was even having the best day ever, and he was like maybe lying in a big comfy bed and was surrounded by friends, he would still go to bed thinking about God. And even when he had nothing, no money, no friends, no nothing, and was sleeping on the dirt in a cave, he would still say, I'm still finding my place with God. Yeah, you can pretend the sun up there is God. Yeah. That's the sun smiling. All right, we're going to pray. We have our sheets. I did fold our hands, bow our heads, and I did, for those of you who've been very patient with me last few weeks, I did get a whole bag of just cotton candy suckers. So they are over there. You weren't here. Well, then you've been extra patient. Well, we've stocked up. Should we pray? All right, fold our hands, bow our heads. Dear God, we're going to remember this morning that no matter what happens in our life, when things are great and it's our best day ever, you are still the place we can call home. Even if we are on our worst day ever and we are very sad, you are still the place we can call home. Wherever we are, we are home with you, and that is the best place to be. So God, we would pray this week, whether it's a good day or a bad day, you would always remind us we are at home with you in our hearts. We pray this in your name. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He cares for me. He cares for me. He cares for me. He's so good to me. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He's so good to me. Would you stand as we sing our next song together? Oh, how I love Jesus.
First scripture today comes from the book of John, chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. Last week after the worship service, somebody pointed out to me, hey, the sermon was about the word I pulled out of the word of the year plate. It was crazy. And I said, what a crazy, random coincidence. I'm shocked. And for anybody who's wondering, here are the other crazy, random coincidences that are going to happen today. Forgiveness, faithfulness, love, prayer, silence, trust, blessing, strength, teach, heart, and truth. Just some other crazy coincidences that might happen if that was your word and you're paying attention to scripture today. Would you read with me from the book of John, chapter 8, verses 31 through 32? Nope, I'm going to read it to you as we reboot the system. Or if you have your Bible open, you can read with me. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We're going to be reading today Psalm 32 from the New, or Old Testament. It is a psalm that King David wrote, and it doesn't specifically mention it, but a lot of theologians think it was a psalm he wrote potentially after one of the worst mistakes he ever made in his life, and he specifically remembers to mention that in life, God is his hiding place, regardless of what is going on in his life. When I was a youth director in Pella, we used to do these things that I will never hopefully have to do again, called overnighters, where you would show up with students at 7 p.m., and then you would stay up all night long until 8 a.m., having the most fun you've ever had with middle schoolers and high schoolers for... 13 hours in the middle of the night. And one of the favorite things to do when we would have these overnighters was to play a game called sardines. Does anybody know sardines? Anybody ever heard of sardines? A few people know sardines. Sardines is reverse hide and seek. One person goes and hides anywhere in the church, and there was the basement, the first floor, and the second floor. Everybody else gives them five minutes. And then when those five minutes are over, and by the way, all the lights are off, it's pitch dark. When those five minutes are over, everybody else goes and tries to find the first person. And if you find them, you do not scream, I found them, I found them, I win, I win. If you find them, it's called sardines because when you find them, you then hide with them. And the goal, the ultimate goal of the game is there is no winner. The ultimate goal is there's one loser, which is the one, like if 30 people are playing, 29 people are all crammed in a closet while one person's going, come on, please, I can't find anybody. Where are you at? And then everybody laughs and laughs and laughs and jumps out and scares them. My favorite thing to do uh, around 2 or 3 or 4 a.m. was to say, all right, I'm hiding next because I knew one place in the church that nobody ever looked. And uh, there was a Sunday school room on the second floor where they would often lean those big, huge, heavy wooden tables against a counter. And what nobody realized is that counter actually had shelves in it that I could just slide into the shelves and nobody even thought to move those heavy wooden tables. And then what I would do, and this was only at 2 or 3 a.m., and yes, there were other adults on the property, so this was not as negligent as you would think it was. I would take out my phone and set my alarm for 30 or 45 minutes, and I would just take a nap in the shelf, and then I would come out, and they'd be like, we couldn't find you, you cheated. It's like, I didn't cheat. And then one time, a few years after doing this, um, I woke up to my alarm, uh, which I did not set on vibrate. I set it on uh, the actual alarm alarm, and one of the kids was like, he was so dumb, I caught him because his alarm or his phone went off. Somebody was calling. I was like, yeah, you caught me. Uh, I'm the big loser. (laughs) What, when you were a kid, here's your... 25 second discussion to have with the people sitting next to you. What, when you were a kid, or maybe you still play now with children or grandchildren, what was your favorite hide and seek hiding place? Turn and discuss with your neighbor. Ready, 
set, go. Time. Did anybody hear a specifically unique or incredible hiding place from somebody else? Nobody? Did everybody hear everybody else's hiding places and go, that was lame. Mine was way better than your hiding place. One of my favorites was if one of my parents was laying on the couch, I would lay down on their legs and then put a blanket over both of us so it looked like my feet sticking out were my parents' feet. And even though they were like 10 feet tall at that point, my brothers weren't that bright. They never found me. No good hiding places? In a pine tree. I remember that pine tree. In a laundry basket. In a laundry basket. I think, were you pointing at Kevin? Yeah. Oh, no, you're pointing at Addie. Good one, good one. Like I said, this, this psalm, it doesn't mention it, but David, the same David that uh, slew a giant and inspired many more soldiers after him to stop fearing giants, the same uh, boy who grew up, grew up the youngest uh, brother in his family and was told, you are someone after my own heart by God. Uh, this same king anointed by God did something really, really really, really like hard to forgive if you're looking at him through human eyes. There was a time in his life when he was overcome with temptation and not only uh, stole someone else's wife, but then arranged for that man to be murdered. And it was one of, if not the darkest moment of David's life when he did all this and it got found out and then he was told to come and repent to God. It doesn't mention that here, but there are tons and tons of Bible people way smarter than me who believe that this psalm was written by David as a response to what he was feeling in those moments. Psalm 32. <clears throat> Blessed is he who transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. And you can understand, if you know that story of David and Bathsheba, you can understand in that time before he was found out, in that time before the people around him knew what he was doing, there was that time when he was getting away with it, and yet he wasn't. He says in verse 3, his bones were wasting away and his strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Even though he had yet to be caught by the people around him, his guilt was wearing him away inside. He was carrying a burden that was far, far too heavy for him to carry. And on top of that, I would imagine he was even thinking to himself, I was the anointed king. I was the one who was a man after God's own heart, and even yet, I still blew it this badly. But then he says in 5, Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you while you may be found. Surely when the mighty waters rise, they will not reach him. 
You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Do not be like the horse or the mule which have no understanding but must be controlled by bit and bridle or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds those who trust in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A couple interesting moments that I find in Psalm 32, uh, one of which is David saying he's going to find God while God can be found. But then it's only a little later that he pretty much admits God is already always waiting for him. That even in David's lowest moment, he has built up a relationship enough with God to understand I can always go back to him because he loved me first. I've mentioned it before here that occasionally you will talk to people, other people who claim to be believers, who say, well, I believe in God, but I feel like we're pretty far apart right now, or I feel like God doesn't approve of me, or God has walked away from me, or God doesn't want me back. And then when I hear that, I always think to myself, well, unless you stole someone else's wife and then had them murdered, you've still got a leg up on David. God makes it pretty clear throughout Scripture there is nothing you're going to do that's going to put such a large wedge between you that you cannot still come back and find God. And kind of like in the same silly game of sardines, instead of God coming and finding all of us, he's waiting for us to come back to him because we are the ones who've driven the wedge. And David is telling us, if you carry that guilt, if you carry that pain, if you carry something that is blocking you from God's love, it's not God who has stopped the love. It's you who needs to remove the wedge. Even though David has done the unthinkable, David has permanently tarnished his reputation on earth even though David is probably in one of the best situations of his life, living in a large fortress surrounded by an army, very, very wealthy. David still knows that means nothing if his bones are wasting away and his soul is in agony and his strength of spirit is sapped. It only means something is if he knows when he turns and goes back, he can find God because God is already waiting for him. And then when God speaks there at the end, he comes right out and says, you are not horses. I don't stick a bridle and a bit in your mouth and then yank on you to get you to go the right direction. You were born and made to run free. And even though I will not move, you can always come riding back looking for me. I'm not going to change the promise that I made. But when you do, you'll still know where to find me. I did not make a bunch of robots or horses that can be whipped and controlled to do what I want. I am offering you a promise that will let you come back and find me anytime you're looking. David had found a way, and you can read it throughout his story, when he's a shepherd boy, when he's fighting a giant, when he is a wealthy king, when he is a lonely man in a cave, when he is in his older age and makes some serious, serious mistakes. He has learned over time, no matter how big that fortress is or how much food he has left in that cave, if he doesn't have that foundational relationship with God, He has no home. He has no 
hiding place. You can see lots and lots of people who spend a lot of time and money making really good hiding places. When I was a kid, my dream when I grew up was to have a full-sized movie theater in my house that I could just watch old classic movies on all the time. And I thought, man, if I ever have that, I won't care about anything else. I'll just go in there and watch what I want to watch and enjoy my life. And then, of course, as I got older, those things don't soothe or comfort you the way that you thought they did when you were younger. Or the guy we knew in Rock Valley who had spent his whole life building himself a hiding place where all of his classic machines were stored. And then one day, the health scare came that suddenly made that garage seem pretty worthless compared to what he really needed to find comfort. David is an excellent example that reminds us if we know where our home is in here, What's happening out here will always pale in comparison. When we are lost in the world, if we know our anchor and our hiding place with God, we will always be able, regardless of our circumstances, to find ways to rejoice. It is the anchor that keeps us sane when we make those big mistakes. It is also the anchor that reminds us, even when we try to tell ourselves I don't think God wants anything to do with me or I've wandered too far away. It is the anchor that supposedly reminds us I can always turn back. I can always turn back. If you think you are someone who can stack your sins up against the people of the Bible, I would challenge you to look up somebody like Naaman or Moses, or David. I would challenge you to look up the weeping woman or the woman who was going to be stoned. I have yet to meet anybody in this life who even compares to the people who drove the wedge between themselves and God in Scripture who all eventually learned, if I go back, and offer my confession to God and tell him I want to be close again, he will accept me every time. That even on your lowest day, you can know there is one promise that I can still hold on to. That God will still always welcome me home if I come with a humble heart, if I confess I've made mistakes, if I offer myself to him, in the way he made me, as a beautiful child. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning, we just sit and be still and meditate on the words of David and remember, God, that you, you loved us first. You created us not to control but to welcome home. And God, we are so thankful for all of those we know who find that home quickly in life. And God, we pray for those who are still wandering and looking and trying to figure out their way home to you. And Lord, we rejoice over those who have been separated from you for many, many years until they finally understand the promise that your arms are always open. God, as we continue to find ways to spend time with you this year, we would pray that you would lay on our hearts scripture and music, prayers, words of encouragement from friends and family and strangers, moments of worship, moments of study, moments of rest that continue to build that home in our hearts where we can always say we have a safe place to hide in you even when physically in this world we may not have that safe place. God, as we come to you this morning, we would continue to pray you would use us 
as your children who can lead others to that safe place as well. We pray this in your name. Amen. As we close out for those prayers in our bulletin this morning, um, we had several big prayer requests this week. One was to continue praying for peace in Israel. Uh, One was to continue to praying for the people of Perry, uh, especially the family of the boy who committed such a terrible incident. Um, We rejoice that we have Ron Steenhook back with us after his knee surgery. And he's doing well. He's going to stand up and do some jumping jacks for us this morning, I think. No. Maybe next week. We're going to hold you to that. Uh, We have Mr. Munger with us as well. We have two guys who can now compare and swap some knee surgery stories. Um, I forgot to mention it earlier, but Al goes up tomorrow for his uh, uh, every four-month cancer checkup. Um, Even though it seems like we just prayed for that, it's here again. I'm sure it seems like it's pretty fast for you when those come around and he's sitting next to Cheryl who is we are not going to talk to we are just going to pat on the shoulder and smile and we can talk to you we're just not going to ask you to talk don't ask her any questions Um, so we're going to come to God in prayer this morning and lift a few of those up Uh, we have had more people than usual have surgeries have issues Um, we have a long list of folks battling cancer again but would you grab a hand of somebody sitting next to you And uh, let's grab a moment to be still and pray with God this morning. Heavenly Father, we know that you have been such a safe hiding place for us in the last few months as we we have lifted so many to you in prayer. God, we would again pray that all of those on our prayer list this morning, in the midst of the things they are challenged with, would find you as a safe home. God, hear our prayers for Al this morning as he heads for his checkup again. Lord, we would pray that that test would come back clear, that you would again give him a reason to rejoice. Lord, be with them as they travel up and spend time with family. Give them traveling mercies as they come home. But God, we are thanking you for the way you've brought through Al through his cancer journey so far and trust you will continue to walk with him in this time. God, hear our prayers of thanksgiving for those who have experienced surgeries and are in recovery. God, we continue to pray for Steve, Lord. We continue to pray that you would heal his knee, give him continued strength and patience as he rehabs and goes through therapy for it. God, continue to hear our prayers for Jeff as he continues to heal from his knee surgery, that you would get him strong and back on his feet again. And God, continue to hear our prayers for Ron, that you would be slowly building him back up, giving him the patience he needs to do the work to get his knee healed again. God, hear our prayers for Lennon and her upcoming surgery. God, this congregation knows well the fear of praying for a young child who is facing a big surgery. God, we would pray you would be with that family in the coming days and give them comfort and peace. God, we pray for Heidi for her upcoming surgery. Lord, we know this surgery has been a long time coming. God, we would pray that you would keep her strong and healthy. God, we continue to pray for John and Bruce as they heal from their heart surgeries. God, we know how incredibly tough that can be on a body physically to have their very heart worked on by surgeons. So we would pray that John does great in his therapy and Clive. We would pray that he is home soon and able to be to continue outpatient therapy in Newton. God, continue to hear our prayers for Allison and Michelle, Kathy, as they continue their treatments for cancer. 
Here are prayers for Jordan and Carrie as they wait for his MRI and give those doctors the perfect treatment for his shoulder. Here are prayers for Joe as he continues to heal from his burns. Here are prayers for Cheryl that her voice would grow strong again and in the meantime, God, you would just continue to give it the rest and the strength she needs to go day by day. God, we lift up the war in Israel. And God, we confess that there is not a human on earth that has a good solution for this. For the hatred and the anger and the death that has seemingly reigned for hundreds and hundreds of years. God, we are specifically coming to you this morning and acknowledging it will only be your miraculous intervention that can solve what is going on. God, hear our prayers for all of those who have been affected, all of those families who have been displaced, all of those people who have lost people that they love. God, hear our prayers for Perry. God, we thank you as a community that we could continue to reach out to them even at a basketball game with a meal or the color blue. God, hear our prayers for those families that were affected. Hear our prayers for those parents who've lost their children. Hear our prayers for that boy's family as they are grieved and feeling alone. Hear our prayers for the Marburger family as they try to get back to normal after losing a father. God, hear our prayers this morning for Scott and Dina and their entire family as well. Lord, it was a long journey these last few weeks by Nancy's side. And God, as deeply as we know they will be grieving this week and for the months to come, we would pray that you would also give them that picture in their minds of their mother returning home to you, of being welcomed into your arms, fully healed and joyous. Let this week also be a celebration of who she was to all of them. God, we come to you as a people who continues to drive wedges between our soul and yours. And so we would pray this morning, if there is anything that continues to hold us back from your love, anything that clouds our minds from thinking that you have the ability to forgive us and welcome us home, let us remember, God, that you have promised so many times there is nothing too large for you to wipe from our hearts. Let us offer those things to you in a moment of silence. God, we remember those words from the book of John. That when we hear your words and follow your words and follow you, it sets us free. Where it matters the most. It sets our souls free. It sets our minds free. It sets our hearts free that regardless of what we face in this world, we know we already have a home built with you. And so we close this prayer with the words that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. you stand as we receive our benediction and sing our last song together, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. As you leave this house of worship today, you are invited to remember, not only this morning, but at any point in your lives, 
freedom, true freedom, to be welcomed home by the Father God in heaven is always at hand. All you need to do is turn to him and accept it. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.